Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a closer look at the energies involved in orbital motion. As again, assuming that the mass of the sun is much, much larger than the mass of the planets. Later on, we'll look at more general solutions to this kind of concept, but let's assume for a moment that the mass of the Earth, for example, the mass of the planet, is much smaller than the mass of the sun, which of course is the case. So here we have the sun, here we have the planet orbiting in an elliptical fashion around the sun, the sun being one of the foci, and if at the moment the planet is at this location right here, you can see the distance of the semi-minor axis away from this point right here, we notice then that the radial distance from the sun to the planet equals a, and that the distance from the sun to this point right here is a times e, e being the eccentricity of the orbit. So we know that the total energy of the object that is in orbit, in this case a planet or the Earth, is equal to the sum of the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. And in general, the kinetic energy is one half mv squared, and the potential energy is minus g m big M over r, assuming that the potential energy equals zero out at infinity. So if we take this point in uh, this uh, moment in time when the planet is at this very location, we can see that at that moment A equals R, and we can change the equation to the total energy is one half mva squared, that will be the, the uh, velocity at this moment in time along the path of the orbit, minus gm big M over A because R now equals A. So when we use similar triangles, notice that this line here is perpendicular to this line, and this line right here is perpendicular to this line right here, we can see that this angle must equal this angle, and then the ratio of b over a must equal the ratio of the velocity, uh, the, what we call, uh, let's complete that right here, uh, the velocity which is perpendicular to this line right here, which is of course the velocity of the angle of momentum, and then we have the, um, uh, let me say it again, so the ratio of b over a is the same as the ratio of v theta over va. Just make it simple like that. And we have that indicated right here. That's, we could do that due to similar triangles, realizing that those two angles are the same. Now notice that the angle of momentum is equal to mr squared omega. mr squared, of course, the moment of inertia times the angular velocity. So then when we want to find v theta, well, that's equal to r omega. We always know that v theta is simply going to be the distance r, in this case r equals a, times theta, uh, I mean omega, which is the angular velocity around the sun at that moment in time, so that's omega, and omega can be written as L over mr squared, r and r squared cancel out, so we have L over mr, or in this case since a equals r, we can write L over ma at that moment in time, so therefore the angle of momentum is equal to the square root of gm over a times mb. Now, this came of course from a previous video, so now we can see that we can write L in terms of gm over a. Of course, this is the what we call the velocity, the orbital velocity, times m times b, b meaning the semi-minor axis. So what we're going to do with all that, we're going to plug that into our equation right here. We're now going to solve for v sub a. We saw this for v sub a, we have v theta over times a over b, which is what we have over here. And v theta is what we calculated here, was equal to L over ma, of course that at that moment r equals a, times a over b. And then we see that the a's cancel out, so v a, v along the line of the orbit around the sun, is equal to L over mb. Now since L is equal to the square root of gm over a times mb, we plug that in for L, and then we have the square root of gm over a times mb over mb, mb cancels out, so we know that v sub a, again that's v along the orbit of the planet. At this point in time, notice that the, the planet will slow down here and speed up here, but at this moment in time, when r equals a, then we know that v sub a equals the square root of gm over a, which is known as the general orbital velocity if we assume the orbit to be a circle. If it's not a circle, of course, that's not a constant, it will increase and decrease, but notice that v sub a at that moment in time is gm over a. Now, at that point in the orbit, the total energy is going to be one half mv sub a squared minus gm m over a. And since v sub a can be replaced by this, 
Notice when we make that substitution, we end up with the total energy being equal to one half mgm over a minus a full gmm over a. When you add those two together, we get the total energy equals minus one half gmm over a. Essentially, when you take a look at that, it's half the potential energy. So, in other words, the magnitude of the kinetic energy, again, when the planet is at this location, is equal to one half the magnitude of the potential energy. And so, therefore, you can see that the total energy is essentially half the potential energy. Calculate the potential energy, divide by two, you get the total energy. Or, you add the kinetic energy to the potential energy, and you get the same thing, half the potential energy which is kind of interesting, but again, that's under the special condition when the planet is at this particular location. We'll look at a more general solution in later videos, but at least that's a good start, and you can see how that ties in with the orbital, uh, the velocity of the, uh, the orbital velocity equation. And that is how it's done. Is that a wrap for today?